It's for about two o'clock in the morning when all the big people have gone for their beds. <laughs> but uh, is there anyone here who maybe doesn't like a smoky whiskey too much? Anyone who's been put off by a like, Friday and I've in the past? So you'll see a different smoke in this one tomorrow. But what I want to show you with this one is a way of nosing and tasting peaty whiskey to help you get past that smoke. So I can guarantee that with this technique, each and every one of you will be able to finish your glass of cold shower. You're going to be my guinea pig for this, sir, okay? Um, but before we go into that, I want to... There's, there's a couple of fantastic stories that, that, that we have at Brick Laddie. Um, which kind of give you an idea of how much fun we have out in the island. Um, the, first, the first story that we, we always tell is the easiest way to find the best cast of whiskey in a distillery warehouse, particularly in Brick Laddie. Uh, at our distillery, everyone wears overalls. So you can always tell we've been drinking because of this trip. But you can always find the best casks in the warehouse. The best casks in our warehouse are the ones that have no moss or dust on the top. Okay? And now you might be thinking, what is so special about those whiskies that no dust forms on the top of the cask? And I think that the excise men that used to live in the distillery probably saw the same thing. These guys weren't the sharpest tools in the box, shall we say. But the reason that the best casks have no moss on the top is because the best casks are the ones that everyone keeps sampling in. And if you have a 500 litre cask in front of you, you will have to bend over it to get into it. And your overalls will rub off the dust from the top. The other way to find the best cast in the warehouse is just to move them slightly. And every so often you will find a cast that has a rattling sound on the inside. Now, do you guys have HP sauce over here? HP steak sauce, brown sauce in the UK. Do you know the square glass bottles that those come in? So, HP sauce, uh, those square bottles were also the bottles used for salad cream in Europe. And the beauty of those square bottles is that they're the exact right size to fit into a cask of whiskey. This is my favorite statistic from Isla. At one point, Isla was eating more salad cream per capita than anywhere else in Europe. <laughs> However, the Scottish people in Isla were consuming less salad than anywhere else in the world. And that gives you an idea of how, how much smuggling sort of came into uh, into the whole thing and, and the, 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 the good old tramming, the good old stealing of good whiskies. But just to finish off with a really tasting thing, you can inspire whiskey to help you get past the smoke. You've all got these wonderful uh, glasses. Some of you have, some of you haven't. This will work really well if you've got the glass glasses. Um, to get past the smoke on the nose, there is a technique that I stole from a gentleman who smelled tequila for a little bit. Uh, about four years ago, I was invited down to Mexico to make tequila. It was a huge privilege. But when you fly to Mexico with 50 people from Scotland, you find out very quickly that, you know, nine tenths of them expect to get to your next school and find a big pile of salt, a tequila factory, and a lemon fuel. Because there's only crap tequila that comes from Scotland, and that's how people drink it over there, unfortunately. However, there's obviously really good tequila down there. You guys from the States will all know that. But to go down there and have the privilege of making it was, was fantastic. You, I got to see a way of making spirit that actually we, we've uh, stolen at Rupladi. Every other distillery decides when to have a spirit because of a temperature and a hydrometer being. We don't do that. We do use hydrometers and thermometers. However, the first thing we do when we cut out the spirits is we smell the spirit. We know it. One shift of Rupladi is one job, one job only. Shift is on at that time, you have to try and make a better whiskey than the shift that was on before them. From a consistency point of view, that's useless. From a quality point of view, that's been magic. So, having seen that really romantic way of working and having not been able to speak Spanish, we got to the tasting part of it and I was very naive, I didn't expect it to have anything. And this is a nosy technique that I've been having for forever. It's, it's phenomenal just how this works. Our master the seller down there said, pick up your glass of whiskey and smell the top, the middle and the bottom. This was genius advice, I'd never heard it before. The reason I remember it so vividly though is because 45 people in the room were doing this. <laughs> <laughs> that will tell you nothing. Take your glass of whiskey, your glass of port tilt it at 45 degrees, and everything in that glass of half is up to me. And you will get 
three very distinctive layers of aroma forming. You smell just above the rim of the glass, you'll smell the, the, what the, the whiskey's made from. You smell the barley, the lightnings, the lemons, the citrus, things like that. You smell the middle of that glass and you get the oak. You get the sweetness from the wood. Same thing, light at the bottom of the glass are the aromas and flavors so heavy the cask hasn't had time to break them up yet. That's where the peat sits, it's where the alcohol sits, it's where the essence of Oak Charlotte sits. So if you don't like the smoke, don't smell the bottle. <laughs> However, it's very difficult to drink whiskey without using the bottom of the glass. So this is another technique for you to help you get past the smoke and the taste. It's something you'll have to try later on. If I grab a wee glass of water later on, take a sip of the water, and physically drink the Port Charlotte through the water. And compare how smoky it is to drinking it neat. Have a sip of that neat just now. Tell me what you think of it. So if you try that water trick, you will have learned how to drink either whiskey for breakfast. Okay. <laughs> I just want to finish saying uh, one, one last thing. Um, basically, I talked at the start about barley being the heart of all whiskey. You can't have single malt whiskey legally without using malted barley. It's in the dead. And just to show you how important that is, for those that have still got some in your glass, put your hand on the top of the glass and shake the whiskey up so you get some on your hand. Okay? You smell your hand when it's wet and you'll get everything from the glass. You get the alcohol, the sweetness, and all those aromas. The smoke. Now rub your hands, not till they're dry, just a little bit, but rub your hands. Take a sniff and the alcohol should disappear a little bit. 